So, thanks for your patience. I'm kicking off this live stream, which is exploring my a specific project. I've been live streaming in general about various projects and and uh, you know trips where I've kind of you know things that I'm reflecting on over the years. 15, 20 years or so as an artist and um, I'm basically with all this time that we have during the lockdown period it kind of makes sense to really um, you know kind of dig out the archives really there's so much content that I've probably got over the years that um, you know I've kind of got buried really that I thought bringing out the archive and bringing out stuff from the past and reflecting on it really and you know the journey and sometimes things just go so fast and um, you know you kind of you don't get time to kind of look back and go okay you know there's some you know, benefit things got missed people didn't get to see it and experience some wonderful things that I've been able to witness and see and maybe trying to capture some of that and share it with uh, with people is something I think we often neglect it's like life is in life so fast you can just you're kind of in the moment and you don't really reflect on things that have gone by enough and if we were to if we were to kind of reflect on things you know we just don't do that right as human beings we just kind of always moving fast and moving on so I've um, got my setup here um, some of you may have seen me live stream in a way over the past few six weeks now uh, every Friday I've been doing something called uh, the congregate live stream which is a wider concept which has various guests and conversations in the theme musicians artists and we've been invited on onto a platform and we have a very structured um, program working with a few colleagues of mine Manpreet Daraj uh, James Hodkinson and Cleveland Watkins as well whose voice you hear in the background by the way the kind of backing as you can hear looping in the background so that show is temporarily put on hold during the month of Ramadan with that another three weeks to go and then we're relaunching that in the meantime what I'm doing here is more of a just ad hoc, experimental, just sharing, seeing where, you know, seeing what, what we can, what I might pull out the bag, basically. Um, as I said, I've got all my hard drives linked up. I've got my DSLR, Sony up at the top here. Um, you know, and I've got my setup and, you know, just experimenting. So I thought I'd focus most live streams I've been doing. I've just been pulling random things out of the bag. This one, I thought, I'm going to focus on the Vatican experience um, because I found some footage and some images and I thought, oh man, I, got, I, I need to share that. But before that, um, I'm going to jump to something here, which is first reflecting on, you know, thinking about my Vatican trip. I, th I think I, I, re I remembered my trip to the Vatican after seeing um, the footage of, you know, on, on these kind of, uh, you know, on the news of these, um, you know, deserted cities you know around around the globe you know and it, and it you know seeing Italy especially you kind of you know it was like wow especially when I went to some of these kind of tourist spots that was you know really um, really kind of uh, reminded me of the trip the time where I went and you know now seeing it so empty so there we go this is a live cam of uh, in Rome and of St. Peter's Basilica um, this is actually a live cam, you know, I've got access to tons of other live cams here. On a previous live stream, I was uh, having a bit of fun actually, looking and spying on the world. Um, and New York City, Times Square, you know, parts of London. And uh, this is Cody actually, by the way. Anyone who knows, is familiar with Cody, knows that. As you can see, it's also kind of disconnected and it's trying to reconnect. So, um, you know what, they, they put on footage on the news of all these cities and things that they want us to see well you know what this is the beauty of taking some of that control back into our hands you know I'm sharing a bit of webcam here you know I can jump around to different cities and you know we have a little bit of you know we, we the power back goes back into our hands because I'm sure like many of you we're frustrated with watching the news and seeing what they want us to see you know when they want us to feel feel doom and gloom you know they will dictate that you know they will unless we of course do the wise thing, which is hit that off button on the TV, right? Um, so this is the beauty of kind of having our own um, channels like this. So 
I am going to just transition and share some things that are on my screen. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here, having a bit of fun as well. Let's not make it too serious, right? And, uh, you know, let's just see, this is all a bit experimental, a bit, um, a bit kind of random. Uh, what you're hearing, first of all, in the background, I see Cleveland Watkins has joined. Um, you are actually hearing Cleveland Watkins' voice in the background, right? Cleveland might, himself might be a bit surprised, right? Because this was a recording that I had from him that I used during my live performance at the Vatican. Uh, so I was invited to perform at the Vatican uh, for the first TEDx that ever took place in the Vatican State. Pretty surreal, right? Pretty, pretty surreal. Anyone watch uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Larry David. There's, there's a little gag in there for you. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty surreal being in the uh, Vatican as a son of an immigrant um, to the UK, to Birmingham, Bangladeshi. My father came from a city called Silet. And um, I was invited to the Vatican to just share something really. And I felt to paint is what I, you know, what felt like a, a brilliant thing to do really um, on top of speaking. So I'm gonna share some screens of that, which you'll be able to see. And while I was here at the Vatican, um, I basically, as I said, I was sharing my art, spoke for a bit, and you can see the full, it's on the TEDx website, TED website, I think. And um, you can also see it on my Facebook, you can watch back afterwards. And I might share a bit of it here, actually. Um, I, I decided to paint, but not only did I paint, I created a bit of a soundscape, a bit of a, a mashup of sounds that included Cleveland's Watkins' voice, um, that you can hear kind of looping in the background right now, actually. Bits of that, combination of Gregorian chants, um, the call for prayer, the Islamic prayer, and of course, one of the most special for me was snippets of recordings of my, when I went for my pilgrimage to Mecca during my Umrah, I had the sounds of people in supplication as they, uh, they spit, circle around the Kaaba, the big black box. And I recorded some audio sounds of that supplication of these of the voices of people, and it was quite quite something that it was quite special really that I was able to um, incorporate that into this into this uh, soundscape, and then play it back at the Vatican, right? So what you're seeing on the screen are a bunch of images, which are basically during my trip. That's uh, what you're seeing on screen is Gloria Estefan actually. She was also one of the speakers at the TEDx in the Vatican. So these are images I've long forgotten about. These are all of the speakers at the TEDx in the Vatican State. Uh, pictures I just dug out and discovered off old hard drives. Uh, I don't think hardly any of these have ever been seen. So even I was surprised. So this was, the, as you're all familiar with the TEDx concept of, you know, giving a kind of a speech of your life about radical ideas around, what does TED stand for again? Technology, um, education and design, I think. Is that right? Anyone can confirm that. Do feedback on the comments section just so that I know that you know there's some life here and I'm not talking to myself um, but yeah so the TED concept you're familiar with but this was the first time TED this was, must have been about what year oh my god about eight or nine years ago perhaps um, where I was invited I got a got a request to come would you like to come and do a TED talk in the Vatican and I was like yeah well of course and I thought why not take my spray cans with me and spray as well. So I was kind of talking and spraying at the same time. Um, so it really was quite uh, quite something. So I'm gonna now pull up, um, let me see. I'm gonna aim, one second. Is there somewhere? Let me see. I'm gonna pull up a little video actually. Um, so you get to understand what that concept, what it all was. <laughs> Uh, street artist Muhammad Ali is a committed Muslim and a celebrated artist who's dedicated his life to breaking down barriers. He paints on the Birmingham streets where he lives, but increasingly on a world stage too. Most recently, by special invitation, in the Vatican City in Rome, the heart of the Catholic Church. He's been talking to our arts reporter, Satna Marana. As in the words of Malcolm X, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Streets across the world are Muhammad Ali's studio. Walls, his canvas. 
His message of peace is illustrated through Arabic-influenced graffiti. Based in Sparkbrook in Birmingham, Mohammed has spent the last 10 years using his work to unite people from different faiths. I, I'm all about kind of um, reaching new people, you know, not preaching to the converted. And it's this message he took to the Vatican City where he was recently invited. He took part in a conference about religious freedom. Mohammed was the only British person to share his ideas as well as his art. A, a Muslim in the heart of Rome, the, you know, that, that was something I, I would say was very brave for them. I'd hope that this is a new wave of people saying, let's look for new ways of engaging now. You know, we really, really do need to deal with some of the complex uh, issues that exist amongst different faith communities. Now been offered by Mohammed to Pope Francis as a gift. Satnam Rana, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. Gosh, what an amazing invitation. It's well, like, an astonishing honour, yeah. isn't it? Might have to go some to rival the Sistine Chapel, I think. Yeah, I'm quite intimidating <laughs> to go in, don't you Absolutely, think? no, good for him. Street artist Muhammad Ali is a committed Muslim and a celebrated artist who's dedicated his life to breaking down barriers. He paints on the Birmingham streets where he lives. So, as you've seen, I'll let that dip out for a second. So, I'm going to share with you, uh, as, I've, as you've, you've probably just seen. Yeah, let me start again. So, what you saw is uh, a little bit of a clip, just to give you a bit of context as to you know what, what that was all about. Um, you can see the full video on the, TED, the TEDx thing. I will, sh I might just share it right now. Actually, let me see. Where can I? Let me put it out on the comments. Uh, here we go. I'm going to do that right now. Give the informality of things, by the way. Uh, let's not. I'm not going to be too structured about this. About, I mean, like, unlike um, when we do our congregate on a Friday night, it's a little bit more organised and you know, a bit more presented, a bit more sharply. Uh, but I, I, I felt like we, I'm going to use this platform to be a little bit more experimental and not, not worry too much and make it, make it a bit fun as well. You know, um, Rufold, yes, technology, entertainment, and design. I thought it was education. Um, but uh, here we go, let me see, I'm going to pull out, where are we now, let me pull out the old, the full performance, I posted it on my Facebook wall, probably, here we go, here it is, copy link address, I think I can post that into the comments, here we go, oh no, that's not it, bear with me, does anyone have it at hand, anyone, if not, it's alright, oh, I knew that would happen. I knew that would happen. As soon as I copy the link, it's played the audio. So, here we go. I'm going to be pasting into the comments section. It should be going uh, right now. But you can watch that later, right? Because I thought I'd use this opportunity to just um, just share a little bit the process and what, what actually happened and, you know, how I went about it. You know what I mean? Just some of the ideas behind it all. Um, so, let me see. Could just uh, what should I share with you here? Audition sound. Here we go. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just share with you the sound element here and the sound design. You should hear the sound here. This is just kind of the an edit of um, the way I kind of edit the sound. An Adobe Audition. Nothing, nothing too advanced here. And um, you'll hear the sound. I think I'm going to try and boost the audio a little bit of this. What's playing here? Let me hear, see if you can hear much. Are you hearing any sound at all? You should hear some sound coming in now. So you hear a mixture of um, Gregorian chants, uh, 
and then it kind of dips in and out of the kind of Islamic call for prayer and then I've, I've used Cleveland's voice he, this was recorded when we did a show together called If Walls Could Speak I don't know if anyone remembers that show it was at the Mac in, in Birmingham it was a, th a theatre show of live painting and as some of you know I do a lot of live painting combined with musicians and poets so I'd use some audio that he'd recorded from, for that show and I kind of repurposed it a little bit with his permission of course if you remember Cleveland <laughs> I hope you remember um, and then when I went ideally I would have loved to take you know gone with Cleveland but it was uh, it wasn't possible at the time so we used some recorded sound and, and I put together this soundscape to while while I was painting and and you know it was it was very very special actually it was really quite something to have almost haunting soundtrack that dipped in and out of these various calls for prayer across you know Christian Catholic faith dipping into the Muslim um, call for prayer you know I'll, I'll let this play a little bit just so you can soak it in a bit So what you see or what you hear, of course, you hear the, that was the voice of Cleveland's voice kind of dipping in and out. Uh, and Nimr Ali, Ali you, you said it quite right, quite beautiful, um, you know, in that kind of almost spiritual, really, you know, it's, um, it was quite it was quite something being on stage. And you must watch the, the full TEDx video um, of, of that Vatican performance because, you know, some I, I recall, I'm going to share with you something. Um, somebody came to me after the performance, 18 minutes, remember, that's how long a TEDx talk is. Um, somebody came to me and said there was a group of people on the front row in the auditorium. There's about a thousand people there, as you can, you can see. Hang on, let me pull it up. As you can see here in the, um, the pictures of, of, of the performance, about a thousand people in the audience. And someone said to me, there's a front row where there was four people, they were all in tears, right? And I, I was kind of stunned, to be honest with you. I thought, you know, I couldn't believe it. I was like, why? I wonder why that is. You know, I didn't really say anything that was, you know, obviously kind of very emotional, you know? But of course, 
there was something in the music, in the sounds they heard, in the, I don't know. And I wanted to know what that was. Um, so it really excited me a lot because it just made, you know, the beauty of art, you know, the beauty of sound and music and poetry and visuals, you know, composed in the right way and presented in the right measures as well. is something I'm always, as an artist of multidiscipline, different art forms, working in a kind of immersive worlds of, you know, theatre and, and, and installation. I'm always kind of looking at tracking those formulas that kind of work and trigger some exciting, you know, emotions. You know, I think it's, it's, it's really quite an um, important thing to do. So I, I literally, in a more find a kind of formulaic way, a way almost strategic, I try to find that, these formulas and go, I'm going to capture that in a bottle and say, there you go, there is the magic formula and I can then disseminate that and teach it and share it with others say look this is this is how you achieve you know this you know this end result you know of you know uh, whatever it might be you're trying to achieve which is you know get people to reflect on certain things or create instill a certain emotion you know then um then i think it's important to kind of reflect on how we achieve it otherwise it just becomes what i always describe as a uh, being a kind of one off set of fireworks really you know it's just a beautiful moment that that just comes and goes it's a fleeting moment which of course there's beauty in that fleeting the nature of, a, of something that's fleeting but sometimes you know we're kind of consistently constantly reinventing the wheel by going okay how what what what, what how do you re recreate that and how do other artists that are coming forward um, learn from that and build on what you've done rather than of course and i'm sure many are familiar with this that um, rather than just imitate and recreate something they've seen, but you'd like them to, to build and develop on it. And unfortunately, sometimes in our communities, uh, I say in particular from the community that I'm from, we see people who just kind of churn out things that they may have just seen. And it, you know, in every community, I'm sure it exists. Rufal Ali 100% agree with mixing medium to create multi-dimensional art experiences, as you never know what resonates with people. Thank you. Yes, thanks for that feedback. Mixing mediums. Um, I don't know if we do that enough sometimes. I can say that in, my, in, in terms of my community. And my community is many, by the way. Before, just to clarify, I mean, I'm, I'm a Muslim. I'm, I'm from Britain. I'm from Birmingham. I'm a Bangladeshi heritage. Our hybrid identities are, are consist of many things. And I, I strongly believe we can belong to all communities and not any one more than the other, you know, as people force us to perhaps you know kind of almost choose one over the other or i'll be asked consistently or have been over the years are you muslim are you british where is your what's your framework what's you know what's the uh, who are you i'm everything just like i can be a father i can be a, a son i can be a husband you know i don't choose one over the other i can be all of those so as someone who's of my community in terms of the muslim community here now right um i see i, I I'd like to see more kind of exp just brave, you know, uh, pushing of boundaries, you know. There is a rich tradition of kind of Islamic creativity, of, of um, calligraphy and geometric design, you know, and devotional music and singing um, in, the, in the Islamic, you know, heritage, in the Islamic culture, you know, this, and it goes way back, you know, architecture, we can see going back hundreds of years, of, you know, contrary to perhaps you know, what many fe perhaps feel that art in the Islamic faith is not something that is, you know, common or prevalent or, you know, uh, but rather contrary, it has existed. But where do we take it? How do we push it? How do we, as people who, as, my, as myself, an example of that, of a Muslim born and raised in the West, in the UK, in the city of Birmingham, son of a working class immigrant, um, where can we really push the boundaries to make it a uniquely you know, uh, uh, Islamic expression that's a kind of a fusion of all of our hybrid identities, you know, of being a graffiti artist, why can't I? And absolutely, I think I've proved absolutely through the work that I do that you can be a graffiti artist and also celebrate your faith and be, you know, spiritual. I can spray paint but express my faith and both kind of sit with each other quite comfortably without any kind of, um, you know, conflict in any way. So there we have it. This was the TEDx experience. Um, let me see what else I've got to share here. 
if there's anything else. Uh, oh, hang on. I'm going to just put a little snippet of the actual TEDx event uh, performance itself. So here we go. I actually spoke first for about five minutes and then I went into the performance. So I don't think there's a way of fast forwarding into this performance, but I'll just play the start for now. First of all, apologies for the way I'm dressed. Um... So what you saw there, of course, was the uh, Nimra I certainly do. Bear with me. So, in answer to your queries, Nimra, yes, I do have the soundscape somewhere. I am happy to pull that um, and send it over to you. Actually, I might put that live again. This is content that was just that's just sitting on hard drives, and I'm terrible at really um, getting this stuff out there. I should I should really uh, be a bit more active in accessing the archives and going share it for people so yeah i can happy i'm happy to do that rufal where is that piece displayed that's a good question you know um the last i left left it was that they gifted that to the pope at the time it was was it pope francis i think it was pope francis the one who washed the women's feet do you remember i don't know if anyone remember yeah it, so it was pope francis at the time yeah so as far as i know they said they were going to gift that piece to him I don't really know if he actually made it to him, yeah, um, and whether he's. Uh, we didn't. I didn't get to, yeah, verify whether it is is in his, in his yard or not. <laughs> it might be sitting in his, sitting in his house, you know, on his mantelpiece. I don't. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I should find out really, shouldn't we? Um, so I don't know. Hope hope you guys enjoyed seeing that um, as I enjoyed sharing that um, because. I tell you something. I, I I feel felt quite passionate about. After on my return, I remember I was quite frustrated. I thought, here I am, as a Muslim from Britain, the only person of British background who was on this lineup. With there was Gloria Estefan, there was an NBA basketball player, and I just thought, here I am. At the time, anyway, think about context here. Someone who's Muslim, who's from Britain, and the perceptions of Muslims which we all know about how the media, you know, like, likes, likes, like to, and still likes to, uh, play up the, uh, the kind of the, the uh, kind of image of, of Muslims being a certain kind of narrow perspective. Um, and I thought this was hugely positive, right? Not only someone who's Muslim, but someone who was also British, a, a guy from Birmingham. And I was on this platform in, in the Vatican. And I thought, you know what? People need to just, not for my own kind of glory and, and, and big myself up, but I just felt like people need to be aware of this stuff so that we can see what's possible and inspire others to kind of go, we can strive to reach such platforms. You know, the Vatican, the heart of the Catholic faith, um, had opened its doors in a way. And I say it's opened its doors specifically, and I'm very, very, very clear about this, because not... They really had opened their doors. I'll tell you why. They never once vetted what I was going to share on stage. Let me tell you that now. All right. Not once. Not once did they say, oh, can you like, just, what is it you're going to say, man? You know what I mean? There was none of that. That is remarkable because there could well be, and understandably, some sensitivities going, we've got this Muslim dude from the UK, right? What, what's he what's he gonna say you know just want to make sure that you don't you know we're, we're comfortable with it because we're you know we're in a place of you know real sensitivity here right but not once they kind of entrusted me to just go and do what i do on stage and i tell you what playing or or, or having the call for islamic call for prayer playing in the vatican right i i won't lie to you i was thinking i wonder how these guys are gonna are gonna take to this but of course, as you know, as and as if you heard yourself, 
I did it in such a way, it wasn't me an imposition of this Muslim call for prayer where I was trying to do, create something that was, you know, sensational and trying to create this spectacle or a, a bit of a tension. No, I mean, I, as you saw, the way I edited the sound, it was dipping in and out and respectfully straddling different worlds and different spaces and, you know, viewpoints in a way. And I think I, I was quite pleased. I won't lie to you. I was um, quite chuffed myself, actually, that how it turned out that it people were not only, um, you know, you know, I, I managed to avoid any kind of um, discomfort with people, but also it was, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, people were inspired to the point that there were some people who got emotional. That's something to. I, I thought it's 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 quite remarkable, and um, something to bear in mind. Sorry, I'm just something's charge. The charge has gone on my laptop, but it's okay. You guys are are cool to just let me see what else I've got here that I can share with you. Um, let me plug in. Uh, Rule number one, never do a live stream without plugging in something. Luckily, I've got two a number of computers here. My laptop was where I was just monitoring what you guys are seeing, so <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Okay, so Nimra, yes, I will I will locate I will locate the um, the sound file for you. Um, let me see, I'm gonna jump back to live cam here. There's a live cam. Um and I'm going to pull something else up in a second. Just bear with me. All right. I'm going to see if this can work. I think it can. I think this is going to work. I'm going to capture. Uh, let me see what I can do. So remember our congregate, which is a live, uh, a live show that um, goes out on Fridays and it will be coming back soon. Um, is a much more structured show. This, on the other hand, is me experimenting a little bit, playing around and seeing, you know, just sharing random things that's just sitting on my computer, um, hard drives and just pulling out old archival content, really. Uh, let me see. I wanted to share something. If this is going to work, I hope it is. It might do. Playing. Oh, yeah, yes, it's going to work. This is going to work, man. I tell you now. So we've got St. Basilica's in Rome on a live stream. And I'm going to pull something else up, which I'm just preparing for you guys. This is live footage from somewhere else. Okay. So where are we now? I'm going to pull up that. And I'm going to pull up this. This is live camera. Here we go. Just one more, hang on. What's going on there? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to transition to this. There's that. You're going to see that now. You should be seeing. Let me see if there's any audio I can pull in on this. So what you're seeing here is live cam footage of um, in Mecca. Uh, and, and I thought to share that because, um, hang on, let me just get this right for you.
Yeah, I thought, I thought to share that because some of the recordings that you would have seen, that you saw, right, um, in that performance, when I recorded the people making a kind of spin and walking around the Kaaba, the cube in the middle, that's when there was tens of thousands of people. Tens of thousands, I tell you, hundreds maybe, hundreds of thousands perhaps, I don't even know. It's hard to tell the numbers when you just in a sea of people as far as you can see. You're, in, you're one, a little dot in that ocean, yeah. And when you're in the middle of all of that, there was a, an amazing kind of murmur of sound of people in, engaged in, in worship of just whatever they could, whatever they were feeling, what, you know, calling upon God for forgiveness. And I was in the middle of all of that. And, I, and that sound, uh, as I said, I still have those sounds I recorded, audio. But now, I mean, they're not showing the footage right now. You're seeing brick wall at the moment in Mecca. Um, because the image of seeing this, which is what's behind those walls in the live footage you saw, and I, I, they, they don't seem to focus on this footage so much. Because, I mean, I think there's a, a sense of a bit of trauma, really, a mental trauma upon seeing a place that normally in that white space there, you're seeing hundreds of thousands of people, right? And I was in the middle of that once, probably how long ago? Ten years ago, recording the sounds of, of prayer. And now, you know, there's not a soul other than the cleaners, right? Other than the people who clean those working class Usually it's Bangladeshis who are cleaning the grounds. In fact, I'm going to show you a little something. There was a beautiful painting that I saw um, that was went viral, actually. Kaaba, hang on one second. Uh, a Saudi art, uh, artist painted it. Where is it gone? It was in the press. Anyone know what I'm talking about? There was a, a beautiful painting that was done with the Kaaba, the black cube. And um, there was a cleaner who was standing before, who was sitting before it, and he was the only one I'm trying to find it. It was on Twitter. Let me see if I can dig it out. Hang on. Kaaba. I just saw it yesterday. Kaaba. Painting. Cleaner. And here we go. Yes, got it. Bingo. I'm about to pull this up now. Check this out. I'm going to share this with you guys. Bear with me. Um, so I'm about to pull up on your screens an image cleaner. So you can see this is a painting by a Saudi artist, I believe, and it's quite profound because you know. We take for granted, really, those people who are doing these kind of labor. You know, you, you, you probably hear about in certain parts of the world, in places like Dubai, the Gulf, and Saudi Arabia is no different. But you see the working class people who clean the grounds, who are dedicated to cleaning the shopping malls that we all love visiting when we're in such countries like the, the Emirates. You know what I'm talking about. And here, what you see on the screen is... Um, there's something quite, you know, profound, right? Really profound that you have. Uh, yeah. So I thought I'd just share that of what probably is a Bangladeshi worker. And, you know, that's the reality here. This is a painting done based on probably a photograph because these are images that are coming out that we're seeing cleaners who are dedicated to polishing the floors while the whole place is deserted. So this is the surreal situation when we look at, you know, whether it's, I thought I'd share that because whether we're talking about Rome and places of worship that are empty, you know, deserted, how do people respond? And, and that can, that's going to lead me to actually this painting that I'm, I, uh, this digital print that's of actually available for sale. In most of my streams, I always kind of pull this in every now and then. And this is a digital piece of art that I drew on my iPad. Um, and uh, 
basically it was basically me exploring what does faith look like in the kind of the new world we're entering how does religion faith and belief in god survive how does it morph what does it what does it become how does it evolve i think it was an important question about what the role of faith at this moment either people crumble and ask questions like why is this happening why does god allow these things to happen or people turn to god turn to faith and recognize the testing times we go in we must be build strength from this test this period we're going through so certainly my perspective anyway you know we can live in doom and gloom or we build and we become stronger and that's that's one thing i've um, you know i'm certainly do my best to keep my head above water number 1 and not just keep your head above water but fight work out how we're going to navigate this madness and we must enter a new world which is going to be you know maybe a shake a wake up call for us all so this ipad in this image i'm sharing on the screen is something that is for sale you can go to let me see i should share that uh, if rufal still watching can you share the link uh, of the artwork that is uh, available um it's up for 50 pound um but proceeds go towards a humanitarian organization called human appeal who are raising lots of funds in this important month of ramadan to donate to to any causes you know to less fortunate Uh, there we go rufal our oh, nice one bro you're on the ball man artoframadan.com where you can buy this piece that i painted in response to you know what the role of faith in the in the world new world we're entering but you'll see lots of other great art or artwork and artists that rufal um from emerald network really um has been committed to gathering these brilliant artists to to kind of um f- you know sell their work so people can benefit and hang wonderful art in their homes but at the same time be something that's beneficial to human beings to human kind you know people who are less fortunate than us and of course we all know those who are fasting this is the time this month is the time for us to to um reflect on that even more so so on that note i'm going to um do what i did in my last live stream just to lighten the tone a little bit I'm going to jump around on my let me go back to my live cam cities here we go where are we now I'm going to jump around let's go and let's go to New York and see what's going on in New York Oh yeah Rufal just said stunning piece sorry I've come off the piece uh, already yeah so should, you know what just just to to hype it up a bit more uh, cuz Rufal thanks for getting in there let's let's go back to it yeah where's the, where's the piece gone hang on oh, hold on a second We'll come back to the live cams in a minute. There we go, Rufal. Thanks, man. Stunning piece, mashallah. We have my uh, friend, colleague Rufal Ali, doing a fantastic job of um, hyping up the painting, this piece. Um, so let's hype it up a little bit more because I'm not going to be uh, what's the word shy about promoting it. Why? Because it's ultimately something that uh, uh, is going to be a benefit to people. So. you know and this stream is going to sit online afterwards and people will hopefully watch it back and you guys will share it as well so in that stream people will see this artwork and uh, hopefully go to artforramadan.com and buy 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 yeah buy this piece buy it now come on guys um got to do that thing you know you'll see it during the month of ramadan you'll see on islamic tv channels those who aren't familiar with islamic tv channels those who are know what I'm talking about but those who are not familiar you should, you just need to tune in on an evening let's see is it after about 10 o'clock i think at night you tune in on one of the islamic tv channels there's one called islam channel 737 i believe and you'll see a whole new world that you're probably oblivious to because you've got people just fundraising all night right through i'm literally all night right through till 4 or 5 in the morning hundreds and thousands of pounds of people are you know people are donating listening to the cause of you know whether it's in Syria whether it's wherever it is in the world the muslim community 
across the country, and I'm, I'm sure across the world, but in particular, the British Muslims are in full on donation mode. We're all kind of feeling on this, on this vibe where we're all donating. And you see these TV hosts are all like on fire. Literally, right? They, they're on fire, man. They're, they're like um, hyping it up, going, come on, we got to donate. Everybody just donate because it's an important time to give. Um, it's, it's quite a spectacle to watch when you see this kind of fundraising. It's pretty, pretty full on. Um, those who are, who are listening in, you, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's, it's full on. But I tell you what, it's, it's something to, to be aware of, really, that actually, you know, while you know, this is a world that exists out there that is uh, where people are donating. So this is this painting, as I said, people are just donating. But this, of course, you're getting something else other than, you know, the reward and the, the good deed that you're doing of um, of buying of buy of of giving donation, but you actually get something tangible out of it, which is this uh, this print, digital print that will be posted out to you. I don't post it to you, but I designed it, drew it on my iPad. Here we go. I'm gonna prove it. Check this out. This is my iPad. So if you can see, let me see. Let me pull in a camera so you see what I'm talking about here. Looking down on me. Let me find a camera that's looking down on me. Is that on me? Yeah, oh yeah, I can, I can put that one in as well. Um, oh no, 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 I'm in the wrong bloody window. Give me a second. Let me go to iPad, iPad, here we go. So check this out. So you see me at the moment, but just to prove that I am on this tech game, I don't mess around, right? We gotta, we gotta keep, we gotta push the boundaries. So I'm lining up something for you to prove that we got to create the best and no settling for anything other than brilliant format of presenting and quality standards is key so I am try you know committed to doing something different and fresh you know those who know me know I kind of can obsess over these things sometimes uh, about wanting to deliver in brilliant new ways so I'm gonna pull up so you're gonna see something in a second. Hold on, leave it there, guys. Just bear with me. This is my setup coming up shortly, right after the break. Nah, there's no breaks here. Thank God there's no commercial breaks, man. Oh yeah, like buy your samosa from Ahmed's Cash and Carry. Okay, here we go. There you have it, right? So you can see my iPad here, and I'm gonna just show you what I do on my iPad. And what I do on my iPad is pretty much live. What shall I do? Yeah, hang on. You can see that. See my brush strokes here. As I'm hitting, you get the idea. Yeah, so I'm drawing, and that image you saw, the digital print, is um, is completely drawn on this, where I can just go, hang on, hang on, here we go. Let me get my spray paint brushes. I like my spray paint brushes personally. They are very exciting. Here we go. Look at that. Who needs to go and spray outside and make a mess when you can do it on your iPad? All right. Check that out. That's my dirty spray paint brush, completely transform that and then I'm going to get my here we go hang on check this out nice dirty brush let's see what should, what should I write here um, buy 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 shall I write that buy my art no no that's being silly let's, let's write something a bit more meaningful something like um, uh, what should we do isolation Push that to the back. Then I'm gonna tag on top of that, write something. Something contrary to that. Let me see what can I do. I do like tagging in the graffiti style, which I never really do 
much to be honest with you but recently I tell you what I found myself quite drawn to just a bit of free flow energetic script if you like you know so anyway I'm not going to draw too much here I'm just doodling away really but as you heard in the the TED the, the Vatican TED thing I did I was talking about the very idea of us doodling as human beings we're all graffiti artists right because uh, you know when you're you know when you've got a pen in your hand you know what are you doing we're all anyway there we go so this is proof of the fact that the image for sale here here we go right, where is it gone there you have it that is for sale and it was done on my iPad let me see if I can pull up the actual artwork is can you all see let me see I've just gone to my menu of my iPad I'm trying to see if you can see all my different designs let me see on your screens whether you get to see it as well um, I'm scrolling through my iPad to find that design where's it gone oh yeah there it is there we have it right obviously this is some of the layers are switched off a bit like Photoshop so I can, I've got all my layers here yeah anyway there we have it guys that will do on that note on that point um, just going to finish off by going on to the live cams and then I am done time for me to do one let me see let me pull up something here oh look at that guys whoa look at that live cams this is from where is that again Rome Piazza Navona you can see this is live live cam here and I can jump around from two different locations there's a family there Looks like everyone seems to be self-isolating. I thought things were ease being eased in Italy. It doesn't look like it from this from this uh, image. Wow, still fairly uh, isolated. I mean, uh, deserted rather. Let's see where else we got here. Different parts of that. Uh, this is in Italy, Florence. Oh, well, you don't really get an idea of from there but let's see what else we've got here should we go to Venice let's see what Venice is saying that's Venice well that's pretty empty there's no, no boats moving around on that canal well, this guy's got a mask on good on him oh there them two were a bit close weren't they to the fella there hey what's that dude behind man he needs to just back off a little bit what, what, are, you, what are you doing mate Okay, there's a bit of distance there between those guys, but what is about there? Okay. Interesting. Oh, who's this guy? What's going on? Do you guys live together? Hope you do. Oh, there's a bit of distance there with the dog and the dog owner. That's good to see. She's wearing a mask. Those two fellas on the boat ain't wearing a mask, are they? I wonder how many people are actually, you know, actively, uh, you know, the mask thing is a, it's crazy uh, how people have so many different perspectives on it. I wear my mask, by the way, all the time. I'm not messing around. So let's jump to New York. Let's see what how busy Times Square is. There we go. Where's Times Square? Check out Times Square and see what the situation is over there. Oh, look at that. So this is live a live webcam of Times Square. Um, looks pretty empty, doesn't it? There's no cars in that. Hardly any cars at all. Bloody hell.
madness. That's quite surreal seeing Times Square that empty, right? Let's see, I've got a few different camera, a few different cameras in Times Square that we can select. So I'm going to jump to on a few different views. Let's see what uh, it's coming up. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, it's, this uh, can't really see much from that camera view. I think there's one more Times Square view in our World Trade Center. Let's see what what the score is there. Nothing going on. Some of these don't work actually. Um, there's a whole bunch of links of different places. Oh, hang on. London Abbey Road. But check this out. Yesterday on a live stream, and there was some tourists. You, you might, some of you may be familiar with Abbey Road, where the Beatles recording studio, where they crossed that zebra crossing, and it was the front of their album. There we go. That's the zebra crossing uh, in London in Abbey Road. Hold on. Just frozen a bit. Let that come past, and then. There were some tourists who were taking pictures crossing this zebra crossing because it's you know it's quite a famous famous landmark. This gives you an idea of how quiet it is out there. Let's have a look. Ooh, okay. Anyway, I do this a lot in some of the li live streams. Just been having a bit of a, a browse of uh, live webcams. It's quite fascinating, actually. You know, when you're kind of stuck indoors, actually, to kind of have an insight into what's actually going on out there. And and the point is, I think we're often kind of just witnessing what we are allowed to witness through the TV, right? What the BBC or the different media agencies, what they choose to share with us, and which ultimately dictates perhaps how we respond or how we feel. It really makes you question about how the media and the information that is drip fed to us, how it has a kind of an effect on how we perhaps might feel and respond. And um, this is why I'm, I find this medium of live streaming a really, really important um, tool for us to control our narratives and, um, you know, do, do what we need to do to, uh, to empower people and, you know, at the back of this, we've got to, we've got to kind of look at how we can, we have the power in, in our hands to transform our own condition because nobody's doing it for you. And as a street artist, I've always said that. And I can I always say that as a graffiti artist, nobody's going to transform our condition for us, no government, no city council, especially certain neighborhoods when we're talking about perhaps in the city parts of the city, perhaps where the migrants are, perhaps the Muslim communities, nobody or the Bangladeshi communities, wherever. Some of these neighborhoods, if we don't get up and transform our own neighborhood in how it looks and how it feels, you know, whether that's cleaning the trash up or painting our walls, nobody's going to come and do it for you. So we have to take the power in our own hands to enhance our own condition rather than sit back and wait for somebody to do it for us. So, oh, zebra crossing here. Is this car going to stop? Yeah, all right. So that's the Abbey Road um, zebra crossing in London. You know, the very famous landmark where the Beatles uh, rec recording studio was and the, I think it was one of, is the cover of one of their albums where they were crossing over the zebra crossing. So this, this is like a 24 hour webcam. And it is 24 hours, by the way, because when I tune in at night, it's dark. So. Because there are some fake ones on here. On here, this is Cody, by the way. I don't know if anyone uses Cody. Oh, hang on. Check this out. Let's go to the pyramids. So I can look at that. Check that out, guys. Um, oh, the smoke was moving for a minute before. Not anymore now. Yeah, so that's the pyramids. Yeah, there we go. Smoke seems to be struggling a little bit there. But um, I think it's my internet connection. So that's the pyramids. But it is fascinating, actually. I mean, I know it's it's a strange thing to do to jump around, what live streams from around the world. But uh, it it is quite an, it, fascinating to to see places around the world and how they are, especially urban kind of outdoor spaces. You know, see how um, 
how people are responding in different places. Well, Paris does this to my computer. For some reason, the Paris webcam um, just freezes my computer up. Not good. And then the other one, I did try this yesterday, Jerusalem, the Western Wall, which I'm fascinated to see. Let's see, it didn't work yesterday. Let's try today. No, Jerusalem ain't gonna open. And I said yesterday, I think, I think um, some authorities are probably blocking it, you know, being Israel, you know the score. I'm flicking through other countries, cities here, Baltimore, where should we go? New York, we've seen San Diego, any, um, any requests? Let's check this out. Wyoming, Devil's Tower. Oh, that's nice. It looks kind of isolated. Probably always is isolated. Anyway, guys, that's enough from me. I'm going to sign out now. I'm going to just summarize to share with you what it is that I've been talking about before I go. So those who have tuned in now or are watching, I've just spent probably an hour and a, probably well over an hour now um, talking about this um, TEDx experience that I had about eight or nine years ago I was invited to deliver a TED talk in the Vatican State the first of its kind to happen at the Vatican and um, I was on stage and I was painting live as you can see in some of these pictures painting live speaking at the same time and I had a kind of a musical soundtrack which consisted of um, kind of Gregorian chants that I'd composed together with you know the live call for prayer and there's some audio recordings from my pilgrimage to mecca as well so it was kind of like a, a, a collage of sounds that kind of wove in and out of each other and that combined with a good friend cleveland watkins a musician he's a jazz vocalist um whose voice was also kind of going running through the piece so do check it out um check back this stream um and the full Ted X talk is also I played the whole thing in the middle of the stream somewhere I can't remember which part where it was or you could just go separately and go and type type it in TEDx the Vatican maybe put my name in and you'll find it on YouTube or something so thanks for uh, allowing me to just ramble on and share what you know the random things that I've been doing over the past 15 20 or so years I've got lots more content if I dig anything out um, I'll be certainly just randomly doing more streams to just share uh, more content that might be a benefit for you guys and it also helps me pass a bit of time here sitting at home all right guys all the best uh, wishing you all a blessed Ramadan um, Nimra thank you for an afternoon inspiring creativity while working from home please don't forget to share the soundscape yes Nimra I will be digging that out and, and sending it over to you um, thanks again guys sorry if I've rambled on a little bit um, but you know as I said I think I'm allowed to right this is just me experimenting and messing about a little bit thanks guys take care now Assalamualaikum